sex crazed boyfriend killer Jody Arias is one of the most infamous female killers of the 21st century. I thought you said the relationship with Mr. Alexander was very stressful. Some of the sex wasn't. So you did enjoy the sex then, is that what you're telling me? At times I did. Now, two new books with stunning behind the scenes revelations. Crime Watch Daily is exposing everything you didn't know about the case, including claims by Jody's attorney that she flirted with him, telling him about grooming her private areas. I think Jody Arias was a very troubled young girl. Arias was convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without parole. But being put away hasn't stopped the unfailing fascination with Jody Arias. In a personal interview with our Phoenix affiliate ABC 15, conducted on the eve of her sentencing, she reveals her last moments with ex-boyfriend Travis Alexander. What were the last words Travis said to you? We were talking about the pictures, you know, and eh, no, that one's good, we'll keep that one, we'll delete that one. And he went from that to, I'm gonna kill you over a camera? Um, it wasn't instantaneous. It built within a matter of minutes. And explaining how she composed herself on the stand. I was very nervous. I was emotional, but it's, it's like I have a lot of practice suppressing things. You realize people view that as being cold. Well, they're not in my shoes, and I'm certainly not cold. Now, the two attorneys central to her murder case are once again on opposite sides of the aisle in a battle of books about her Arizona trial. It's a tragedy, and it's, it's just filled with sadness. Defense attorney Kirk Nurmi and prosecutor Juan Martinez each divulging their personal experiences at the scene of the crime. Walking into the second floor bedroom, it appeared that somebody had taken the sheets and the comforter off the bed and uh, walking into the bathroom, there was blood everywhere. It was on the sink and down the hallway. His body was stuffed into the shower. And behind the scenes of the trial, Jody's attorney reveals what upset her most. That looks like me. Explicit naked photos in evidence, placing her at the murder scene. Let's just say I've seen all of you. Some of them were very graphic, so I would say she was certainly uh, embarrassed by that. Image is something that was very important to Miss Arias. And he acknowledges, so was getting her way. But with Miss Arias, it was different. There was always um, a need for attention, and, and visits could be two, two and a half hours long. They were very mind-numbing. You came out of the, I describe in the book, coming out of there just kind of just exhausted. He said she saw him as her boyfriend, which creeped him out. But I certainly saw elements of manipulative behavior in terms of, of her interactions with me, and trying to manipulate me with her emotions or, or seeking sympathy. Lurid details from the Arias trial captivated the country for years. Did you go to Mr. Alexander's home, home on June 4th with the intent on killing him? No, I didn't. But the prosecutor claims Jody Arias carefully planned the murder. She obtained three five-gallon gas cans so that she could travel through the state of Arizona without stopping for gas. That way, no one would be able to detect that she had actually been in Arizona. In fact, he reveals new evidence never presented to the jury, that there was a handgun, a knife, and condoms found in a rental car. She brought a gun and she brought a knife up to a bathroom where he was standing under the shower. It made no sense uh, to believe that an individual who is absolutely defenseless and doesn't even have any clothing would have attacked her, and she would have been uh, appropriately prepared with both a gun and a knife. The two famously sparred in court over the smallest details. You're making my brain scramble. So how is it that if it just happened, you can't even remember what you just said? I think I'm more focused on your posture and your tone and your anger, so it's hard to process the question. From her prison cell, Jody continues to fascinate America, divulging intimate details about her life behind bars. I've been told that I scream and cry in my sleep, and several times I've woken myself up screaming. Um, I don't have memories of the nightmares, so I'm not sure what I'm dreaming about. And despite brutally killing him, she says she now lovingly remembers him. Travis had many wonderful qualities, many redeemable qualities, and those are the qualities that I focus on. Those are the qualities that I liked and the qualities about him that I loved. I know the worst of Travis, 
but I still wanted him to be happy. Her defense attorney says he did his job by keeping her off death row, but reveals he tried repeatedly to be released from her case. His book cover says it all. It's titled, quote, Trapped with Ms. Arias. A lot of people were under the impression that, you know, I chose Ms. Arias as a client or that I supported what she did or that I believed her. I had filed a motion to withdraw from the case and uh, ultimately the judge decided to deny that motion. So I was ordered to stay on the case. Prosecutor Juan Martinez sums up his book in one word, quote, conviction. Travis Alexander had been stabbed in the chest. He had his throat slit and he had been shot in the face. We had this beloved young man whose life was taken from him on June 4th, 2008, and we had a troubled young girl who was still finding her way in life is now spending the rest of her life in prison. And I think that's, that's a tragedy no matter how we look at it. Now, Arias has continued her arrogant and often aggressive behavior behind bars as well. Earlier this year, she was denied visiting privileges after she reportedly insulted a prison guard when she was not allowed to get a haircut.